Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today I thought we'd have a bit of fun and make this sweet little leaf bowl. Just big enough to put little trinkets, rings, something like that in. And it's made through a simple leaf cane and then we're going to put it round a shape to form the little bowl. I decided to do the leaf cane after several comments I'd had from people regarding this sculpture that I'd made using a very similar leaf on the bottom of the flower. And whilst obviously the sculpture itself is far too complex to be able to show you the, the whole thing and how to make the whole bits. I had a look at the leaf cane and thought that yes, by itself, it would be suitable to do as a little tutorial for you. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's start by taking you through the equipment you need for today's project. The equipment you're going to need today includes a polymer clay blade. This is used for taking nice thin slices of your cane once you finish making it. I often refer to these as tissue blades, which is what I know them as in the UK. Some form of craft knife, just something fairly simple. Some form of tool that we're going to press down through the clay to create grooves with. This is a four millimeter short knitting needle. Um, you need something that's not gonna break, something that's nice and strong, so this is perfect for the job. A small roller, just an ordinary clay roller. A thin strip of paper which we're going to use to do a little measurement. You're going to need something to bake your bowl round. Now this is a spent light bulb, one that's gone and is completely defunct. And I've just added some scrap clay to the bottom and baked it so it can stand up nice and flat. A very small bowl would do as well as so you could do that. And all I've done is I've just gone round with a marker to give myself a line to make sure that when I'm putting anything on it I don't go over to the point at which it goes in on itself because you're not going to be able to peel it off so that's the only thing to remember with a light bulb you can only go up to the area where you could then actually peel things off I've got a large round cutter and two small round cutters and it's difficult to be able to say to you what size cutter you need because it depends on the size or the circumference of the piece you're going to put something around and say that will make more sense as we go through the process and the small cutters are for making the base of the bowl and again that will make sense as we go through the process with that one as well you'll need a large piece of paper big enough to cut around your large um, circle and also a pencil and a pair of scissors. I'll be using a credit card blank. To be honest, you can use old credit cards to so make sure they're not ones you're going to be using anymore, but something which has got a nice um, sharpish edge, but it's quite blunt. So we're going to press into clay to give ourselves some um, shape and movement with that. As always, a tile to bake on and some foil to wrap around when we bake to make sure the clay doesn't um, burn if the oven spikes. And then we'll need a measuring sheet. And this one is the one that I use a lot. It's freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net and it's the four lines or the four squares to one inch. And I've simply laminated it to make it easy to work on. Only other things we need, I will always use wet wipes, tissues to dry and wash my equipment as I'm going through. And of course, a pasta machine makes life so much easier. So having done all of that, let's move on to the clay you need. So for the clay I'm using today, I'm using Fimo Soft, but all brands of polymer clay will work well for this technique. I'm using the Calypso Blue, the Tropical Green, Sunflower Yellow, Indian Red and Royal Violet. And each of those are half ounce or 14 gram sort of amounts, so a quarter of a pack of the normal small packs. And then I've got tiny little bits of just some white and some yellow, and that's going to add in to give us something extra when we put in the middle leaf vein, just to give it a little bit of extra colour. Condition all of your clays separately in these colour sizes, and keeping these two separate, condition them separately. If you're unsure what I mean by conditioning polymer clay, I do have a video which shows you a few tips and techniques for that, and I'll put a link to that at the bottom of the video description. I'm going to put all of my colours through on a medium setting of my pasta machine, and on my pasta machine, naught is thick and nine is thin, and I'll put them all into sheets on setting number three. And once you've got all of that done, it's time to get going. So let's get starting on making that little bowl. So I've conditioned all of my clays thoroughly and we're going to start the main part of the leaf 
with the yellow, the green and the darker blue and we're going to do a Skinner blend between these three colours. So the two end ones I'm going to chop across the diagonal and the middle one down the middle and then I'm just going to fold that one up like that, that one like that and then we put them together with the green down the middle and I'll swap the blue up around that way to put him down there. It's only a very rough oblong but I want to make sure that I've got all blue on this side and then slowly going through to the green until the yellow comes in and they end up with all yellow on that side. I've put all of these through on setting number three so far so now I've got two layers and if I now fold it up to do a Skinner blend I'm going to put it through the pasta machine at fold first. I've got four layers, so I need to put it onto a thicker setting, so I'll put it on setting number two of my machine. If you're unsure at all how to do a Skinner blend or what it involves, I do have a separate tutorial showing you how to do a Skinner blend with a few tips and techniques, so I'll put a link to that in the details below the video now. So I'm going to put that back through and create a nice smooth blend from the blue through the green into the yellow. So by doing that constant folding, we put it through yellow on one side, blue on the other, we end up with this nice, smooth transition from one colour through to the next. So I'm going to make that smaller, because I don't want to work in something that length. So I'm actually going to chop it into three pieces, stack them one on top of the other, and then pinching the blue end, I will put it back through the past machine on the same setting, so setting number two. Always when you're doing something like this, put it through the dark end first. If there's any bits of clay collected um, in the past machine, they'll go on the dark bit, not on the lighter bit. And I will hold tightly onto this end, because obviously I've got three pieces there. I don't want them to splay apart as I'm going through. So I will put those through first to give myself a longer piece. There we go. And now I'm going to do the same, but put it through to my thinnest usable setting on the pasta machine, which on my machine is nine. And again, I'll put that through dark end first, all the way through this way on to give myself a really long, thin piece of blended clay. So here we have our nice long ribbon of clay. If you ever have any problem when you're putting this through, if it breaks, just patch it, don't worry about that. Um, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to start at one end, doesn't matter which, and I'm just going to concertina backwards and forwards to probably about um, nearly an inch, certainly over two centimetres in width, all the way down from one end to the other, trying to make sure I'm not trapping any air in the folds as I go. Now I'm not a particularly neat person when it comes to making a concertina, so you can see this is quite skew -if, but that's fine, so I'm just going to do press it flat, press it flat, I'm not worried about how the ends look and I'm also just going to press it slightly shorter that way because what I'm planning to do now is I want to make some grooves down into this and I'm going to press hard down from the yellow down into the blue in three places and I'm going to use a short thick knitting needle, this is actually a four millimeter knitting needle to do this. Now use whatever you have to hand but be aware that you're going to press hard so make sure it's not something that's going to break halfway through. So once you've decided what you're doing I'll start in the middle and holding it quite tight in I'm going to press a long way down. If I lift it up you'll see I have gone a long way down in that one. Take it back up, do one that side, take it back up and do the same that side. So we end up with three nice grooves and what this does is it just pushes the colours down and gives more variation in our leaf. So I'm now going to push it back together to give myself a square form. So we are going to have a pattern where we've got the yellow through to the blue with some nice, say, stripes in the middle. But what I want to do is I want to off-centre this, because at the moment it's very straight and very square. What I actually want to do is to make it more of a diamond shape going in that direction. So I'm just going to press down with my fingers, creating more of a diamond shape. And once I've done that, I can now start to reduce it by push pressing in along those flat planes that I've created but it's not a square there's always a slight angle so it's like a diamond shape that I'm reducing in and I want to reduce that till it's about four inches in length 
So we're nearly there, so I'm going to chop the end off just to neaten the end off slightly. So you can see there where we poked through with a knitting needle how it creates those grooves. And I'm going to cut off one square's worth, so one inch, two and a half centimetres, and that's our first bit of our leaf. Now I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to reduce it to four, cut off a piece, reduce it to four, cut off a piece. And we'll keep doing that until we've got suddenly three pieces going. So for this last piece, I'm only going to go until it's just over three inches. And then this final piece until it's just about two and a half inches. Or two and a half of the squares. Okay, so there are my five decreasing sizes that we want for the side of the leaf. And then this is going to form part of the centre um, vein that goes up the, le the leaf. So I want to put that back into a Skinner blend. So I'm just going to square it back up again. And then I'm just going to press it. So it's quite a short a thin piece but I've got yellow on this side then the green and the blue and we will redo a little bit with that in a moment and redo um, a centre vein. We now need to take the colour we're going to use for the smaller veins and to go right way around the outside. And this is where I've used this royal violet. Now this at the moment is through on setting number three but I want it really quite nice and thin so I will do it on setting number seven and I only want a piece that's about an inch wide because that's the same width as all my pieces so I'll cut myself a piece just wider to start off and then put it through setting number seven going that way on my pasta machine. So I can now chop off the end and taking this first piece I just want to put the vein across this part so I'm going to start it here but I'm not going to go right to the end so I'm going to chop it off before it gets to the end. The next bit sits on like that. And I'm going to repeat, starting at the end, but chopping off before it gets to the end. And just carry on with all five pieces. The final piece sits on, but we don't need a vein on the top of the final piece. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn that flat on my work surface because I want to press all the bits down to really sort of skew and make more of a leaf shape. So starting with this end, not touching anything down here where the, the main part of the green is, I'm just going to press the blue upwards to force the angles to really give a nice sort of diagonal across for those veins and then the top bit will just fold over. And that will give us the side, one side of our leaf. But we want to put that into two sides. So what we need to do is to make it bigger this way. Now if you're working with more clay, if you're working with double the amount, then you would have cut these into two inch slices. And at the moment, all you'd have to do is chop down. But with this amount of clay, I've tried doing it the other way, doing it, say, twice the length. And it becomes very fiddly. Um, so for me, I find it easier to do this way. But do whatever suits you. So if you wanted to do it the other way, say you just make it into a six inch length, chop off two, six inch, chop off two, six inch, chop off two, and then do it like that. So all I'm going to do is I'm just pulling this wider. I'll press it slightly shorter as I go as well. So just pulling it really with my thumbs. And I want it to do, it's about two inches in length. You'll normally find it curves slightly, that's fine. If it's curving too much you can always just push it flat back down on your tile or sheet and just work slowly. Take your time.
when I've got it roughly to the width I want, I'll just go back and make sure that these pieces are nice and neat. Make sure I haven't got too much of a curl where it's folding in in the middle. And then you can chop it in two. And you'll see for the first time the sort of effect that we are going to get. And so having those, pressing those lines down just gives a nice effect right down the middle. So the next thing we need to do is to create a nice big centre vein because that's one of the trademarks of this particular leaf cane. So we are going to find that piece we had left over from the end piece, which has got the yellow, the green and the blue still. We're going to take that little piece of extra clay that we had, the extra yellow clay which we conditioned, and I'm just going to roll it into a log that fits on the end of our blend. I'm going to get that little bit of white and we're going to roll it into a log that fits on the end and then with some of the conditioned cherry red I'm just going to tear off a piece about the same amount of this and we're going to roll it into a little log that again will fit on the end. So having got those on there we will take our roller, give those a bit of a roll just to make sure they're nicely joined and then I will start putting that through the pasta machine to effectively create another Skinner blend. So I'm going to put it through just once on setting number two, so quite a thick setting and now I'm going to put it through but I'm going to skew it slightly so I'm going to do it at an angle so that the red starts to go over the white and the yellow and the white and the yellow start to go into those blues and having done it once like that put it through fold first and then start collecting it and folding it exactly the same with a Skinner blend but every other time keep it nice and square and you'll end up with a nice blend through all of those colours. So when you've got your blend going and what I was doing when I was putting it through I was always abutting it right up to the edge of the pasta machine so I had some control over the length it was going. You want to have a look at how long it is in comparison to your the side of your leaf cane. Now you want this to be shorter to only come up really to about here at this particular moment. So I'm going to fold this in half and I'm just going to with my fingers just press it slightly to make it shorter. And once I've got it roughly the um, width I want I'll put it back through the pasta machine one last time on that setting number two and now I have a piece that's roughly the length I want. So I'm going to neat off the ends and fold this one back and on itself. And if I, if it wasn't, actually that's turned out to be exactly the right um, width. If it wasn't exactly the right width, I would have pulled it slightly longer. But having got that, we are going to then take um, a piece of the thin clay that we used to make the veins in here because with any luck that will be exactly the right width or it should be to go right over our middle piece so just fold that over chop off at the end and now the red piece is going to be our top part of the vein so I'm just going to pinch that nice and thin pull it out slightly so it's decreasing towards the top in thickness and then that should sit onto our piece. So just make it longer until this middle vein comes right up, halfway up where the two pieces join. And then you can put your two pieces together. I wasn't worried about it being messy on the end but I thought to show you how it looked I ought to take that piece off. So now we're going to take the rest of our cherry red and I'm going to put it through because this has already been conditioned, fold it up to make it roughly the same height as your leaf cane and then we will put it through a pasta machine on the thickest setting you can have with the amount of clay you have left. So I will start it on setting number two and see how we go and because I've folded at the sides of course it needs to go through that way to make sure the folds either at the sides or at the bottom. So two is not quite long enough but three should be fine. Yes, yeah, setting three will be lovely. So just take your piece, drop off one end, use your blade to go up either side 
and then with this extra colour I like to miss out the bottom so it starts just where the, the veins would be or the, the outside of that middle vein. Pull it round the top all the way around to the bottom and then again I will chop off where that vein is to leave myself a gap because then it looks like the red's just coming around the sides. Then I'm going to gather together all of the dark colour that I've got left Make sure there's no air trapped inside. And again, I'm going to pinch this just with my fingers until it's the right width to go around our piece. Now, I only want a thin setting of this, so I'm going to try it to start with on setting number seven of my machine, and we'll see whether that's enough to go all the way around. And yes, there's plenty there. So as before, start at one end. And this time I will go right way from the middle, all the way around the outside. And one final little touch, just to create a little bit of extra interest in our leaf. Get, get your old credit card or a credit card blank like this one is and all I'm going to do is I'm going to press down from the outside to create grooves going in to the inside. Just create little dots or lines of colour going in and I'm going to do it in the same direction as the veins are going. So to start with I'm going to go down that way and then as it comes down I will round in and then I'll flip over and do exactly the same on this side going down in that direction. And I'll do this laying flat on the um, tile so I've got a nice amount of purchase. So literally press in and I'm going in about that much as I go in. It just because your credit card edge is slightly blunt, it just presses the clay in and gives a nice little added detail. You can see there how it's just going to create little lines, not a lot, but just a little bit of extra as it pushes in around the outside. So what we need to do now is to reduce our leaf cane. Now I already know I need it smaller than this, so I'm just going to start pressing in from the ends to give myself a diamond shape or more of a leaf shape as I reduce because it's easier to go. But I want to make sure I don't go too far or too small. So the next thing we need to do is to think about the size of the form we are going to bake around. Here is the light bulb that I've already drawn around so I know exactly the area I've got to use. So get yourself that small piece of paper and all I've done then is held it in place and gone round till I've got a place the length of my piece that I've the usable part of the lampshade. I then folded the paper in half and marked it. So I know that my leaf cane doesn't want to be any wider than that. The other thing I then did is having worked out the size of my light bulb, I found a cutter that was the closest I could find to that same circumference over the top of the light bulb. Having done that, I cut out a piece of paper the same size. When you've got the paper the same size, fold it in half and then fold it into thirds. Take a bit of time because you want a nice point of this and you want to make sure that this in a bit and that in a bit are nicely lined up when they are. Give some folds. and you should end up with a nice piece which has got your six segments in. Use a ruler and a pencil to score yourself some lines and I now know the angle that I want this inner part of my leaf to be and the um, maximum width I need the leaf to be and I will use this as a guide when reducing the rest of my cane. So I will carry on reducing that. I will probably chop it in half because I know I don't need all of this to make myself a little bowl and I will keep some of it larger. But I'm just pressing in, pulling to create a nice leaf cane. So I'll chop it in half now so we can see the leaf we've got. And there you can see 
our little leaf cane. So I'll put one side, one half to one side, and then carry on reducing this until it is the right size for what I want. Now that's pretty close to what I want and I'm going to round this off anyway so by the time I round this off that'll be inside that. But what I'm looking particularly at is the angle and I want something that's just fractionally smaller than those segments. I'm just going to check because it's sometimes one segment is different size from the other no matter how carefully you fold the paper but that's about right so I'm just going to round off by pressing in the end of our leaf. And I should now have more or less a perfect size leaf cane. If you've got a flat side, lay your piece down on that flat side. And when you cut, you're going to cut diagonally down to take advantage of that flat side so as not to distort the clay too much. So I haven't neatened off the end, you want to cut six nice even slices. And I'm going to be cutting down in that diagonal line so that I don't get too much in the way of distortion. I've actually cut seven there because I can see that the second one I did, because I'm doing it at an angle, went way too thin at the bottom, so I'll put him to one side. So even though you've tried not to get much in the way of distortion, you will probably find that the it's flattened out slightly. So just take your pieces and you can adjust them a little bit if you wish. Just make sure they're going to fit nicely together. So I'm not putting them together on the paper, I'm just using the paper as a guide, making sure I've got those angles right, because you can always change it at this stage. It's much easier to change here than when you've actually got it on the light bulb. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. So find the light bulb, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two pieces in first. I'm going to try and find the centre point. Put one piece on. Then put another piece on the opposite it. I'm then going to look, see how far away it is from that line. That's not too far off, so I'm quite happy that that is more or less my centre point. I haven't pressed them too hard, because I'm now going to put the next two pieces on. And I'm going to try and get these so that they all fit in nice and tight towards the top and the same with these two so it's a bit of a juggling act if you find that they're too wide then simply pinch them thinner and what we're looking for is to get them all in so that the points are at the top Once you've got it roughly there, just very gently press them down the sides just to see how we're going. It's so constantly looking at how far away it is from that line. And say so adjust them slightly so that one's a bit further down. So I'll just push him so slightly further up. Once you are fairly happy, that one can come down slightly further. Then you can take your knitting needle and very gently start to roll them up towards the middle. So you're making sure there's no trapped air underneath, because if there is, it'll get pushed up towards the middle. And you'll join together the seams of those leaves. You don't want too much of a lump in the middle, because you want to make sure that the underneath is nicely joined, so that when we peel this off, we don't have any gaps. You can also take your roller, just give it a bit of a roll to get a nice flat surface. And then it's up to you whether you want to leave it flat like that or whether you want to use any texture to give yourself some texture underneath. You can get some very nice preformed leaf veining um, moulds online, they'd be good to use over your leaves. What I, what I will do is I will make grooves down the centre of the leaves.
and then just slight lines going down just to sort of give a little bit of a leaf effect, not very much. And last but not least, we need to make a base just so that that's going to stand upright when it's baked. So take whatever you've got of your leftover of the dark clay or any other colour clay that you wish. Take about half of it and roll it into a log. That's probably a bit much and take less than that. Just want a, a thinnish log and then I'm going to pull that round so it joins in on itself. Because what I'm looking to create is a loop of clay. Bit of a roll so you can't really see where the join is. Make it as round as you can. And then that will sit on the top and in the middle of your leaves. Find your piece of paper and then upside down you are going to press down hard with this nice and upright to create a nice smooth base, a nice flat base. Working on the basis that if the light bulb stands up then your bowl will afterwards too. When you're happy that's nice and flat. Find a cutter that's roughly the right size. I see that's not bad. Um, take the leftover bits of your clay and put it through on as thick a setting as you can manage so that you can cut out a nice round. So I will try that on setting number three. Cut yourself out a round. That should sit nicely on top, just to neaten off the base. Give it one last check if you want, just to check that it still stands upright. And then your piece is ready to bake according to the manufacturers of the brand of clay you are using. So you could either sit your piece upright like that and I would tent the whole thing in foil or if your oven's not tall enough, find your tile to bake on, get a little piece of foil, curve it over and then you can just rest your light bulb on that. And then I will tent the whole piece in foil so that if my oven spikes at all whilst baking it won't burn the clay. So we'll get that one baked and when it's nicely cured I will bring you back and we will remove it from the light bulb and see what we have. So once your piece has finished curing and it's out of the oven and fairly cold, this one's still very slightly warm, um, all you need to do is very gently start to peel off the petals from the light bulb. Very gently lifting them off as you work your way down. Go around the other way. And it should suddenly ping off. There we go. What you're left with is a really lovely, shiny, very smooth on the inside little leaf bowl. Perfect for tiny little trinkets. You don't need to do anything else to it. So where it's um, sat next to your bowl or your light bulb or anything else, it should be lovely and smooth so it doesn't even need sanding or polishing. So there we are, sweet little leaf bowl ready for trinkets. And as always, I've got a couple of other colour options for you. So this one was done using lemon yellow, aqua and peppermint. The accent colour here was raspberry, which I then mixed in next to the peppermint to give a little purpley shade. And the dark outline was done in the Windsor blue. This one is slightly larger, and rather doing it on the light bulb, was done on a semicircular mould, or semi-hemisphere mould, that I purchased online. And that one then has come out like this. And the colours I've used here are raspberry, lilac and the plum, with the accent being the apple green, and a black outline. I say so that one's just very fractionally bigger than these two. So there we go, that's the end of that project, a little leaf bowl. I hope you enjoyed that one, it was good fun to do and I hope it's given you some ideas to make lots of other canes and other colour combinations. As always thank you so much for watching and for those of you who subscribe thank you again, I really do appreciate you doing that. I think that's it for now. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.